field ball. Yes, it's the Gay Family Series starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers this morning, they're just ready to have breakfast. Good morning, George. Mm -hmm. Hey, what are you so gay about? Because we're going to the Starlight Roof with the Rickies tonight. I've always wanted to go there. Uh Uh-oh. Was that tonight? Yes, and I'm going to wear my brand new dress and a pair of... What do you mean? Uh Uh-oh, was that tonight? (laughs) Well, we can't go, Liz. Mr. Atterbury's coming over with Mr. Forsythe. Oh, George, can't you put them off? Tell them you broke your leg or something. Oh, sure. They wouldn't suspect anything when I walked into the bank in the morning. Well, after we come home from the starlight roof, we can break your leg. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, honey. Mr. Forsythe is too important. He was just elected to the board of directors. You, you'll just have to call the Rickies and tell them we can't make it. No. Liz? Baby, won't you think of me Look. once a... <laughs> Pouting won't get you any place. So just slide that lower lip back about a foot. <laughs> Baby, won't you think of me once in a while? Now, why don't you think of me once in a while? You know, all business isn't done in offices, Liz. There are more important things for women to do than taking care of the house and cooking and looking after children. There are? Well, I should say so. Hey, wait a minute. You have a maid to take care of the house. You don't know how to cook, and we don't have any children. Hey, what do you do all day, anyway? What do I do all day? Well, I like that. I spend hours... I spend the whole afternoon... Most of my time is taken up by... I'm going to call the Ricky. That's better. And see how nice you can be to Mr. Forsythe this evening. Oh... Is he bringing his horsey wife and that jerky son of his along? His wife's out of town. I don't know about his jerky son. Now, stop that, Liz. You'll get me in trouble. Well, he's sure to bring along some of those stale stories of his. Yeah, and that's another thing. He fancies himself quite a storyteller, so laugh it up. I'll laugh at everything but that story about the dog and cat. You know, the cat can't sing a note. The dog's a ventriloquist. Liz, he always tells that one. You, you have to give him some reaction. I'll give him a reaction, all right, but it might not be the one you expect. <laughs> I'd better test you. Now, let's pretend I'm Mr. Forsythe. Okay. <laughs> have you heard the one about the dog who played the guitar and the cat who sang Listen to the Mockingbird? Yes. Liz. <laughs> a thousand times. Liz. It wasn't funny in the first place. Now, stop. You tell it lousy. Now, that's enough. Where's your horsey wife and your jerky son? Now, cut it out, Liz. (laughs) I want to hear you laugh tonight. Well, then you better sit close and tickle me. Good dinner, Liz, girl. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. It's a wonderful dinner, Mrs. Cooper. Certainly was wonderful. Well, thank you, Mr. Forsythe. Yeah, well, hey, I just happened to think of a very funny story. Well, here we go. Oh, this one is a, this is a Jim Dandy. It's a real pipperoo. Say, hey, have you heard the one about... No, I haven't No, heard how one. does it go? But, uh... Hey, no, really, we haven't heard it. Go ahead. Uh, but I haven't told you what it's about yet. It doesn't matter. They haven't heard it. <laughs> they might have. Uh... Want to bet? <laughs> Is it about the dog who played the guitar and the cat who sang? Uh, yes. They haven't heard it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it seems there was this, uh, dog. Dog, <laughs> you see, and he... He played the guitar while while a little cat sang, um, um... Listen to the Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're uh, sure you haven't heard this one? No, no, and I'm dying to see how it comes out. <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. <laughs> well, his booking agency took him down to a theater manager. He was amazed, and he said, That's amazing. Now, here's where it gets really good. <laughs> and the, agent, the agent said, Look... Before you hire them, I think there's something you ought to know. 
Something in my throat. Have a glass of water, please. Miss Cooper? Liz! Huh? Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> the cat can't sing and know the dog's a ventriloquist. <laughs> it's a funny idea, isn't it, George? <laughs> Liz. <laughs> Mr. Forsythe didn't finish the story. He asked for a glass of water. Ooh. <laughs> You've ruined his story. Oh, was that really the answer? It was just a wild guess. <laughs> no, that wasn't the answer. It wasn't? What? No, no. You see, the theater owner wanted to hire just the cat. But the agent said he can't work alone. Here's the twist. See, uh, the dog makes all his arrangements. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's yeah. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Uh, tell me, Mr. Forsythe, how's your family? Your cute little wife and your uh, adorable son. Oh, they're fine, Mrs. Cooper, although my son, Wally, is really having a very trying time right now. Oh, uh, what's wrong with the boy? Uh, his first big formal dance is next week, you see, and it seems everybody in his crowd knows how to samba, but poor old Wally. Oh, oh, for goodness sake. Children worry about the silliest things, don't they? Doing the samba is so easy. Do you know how to do the samba? Oh, Liz is a wonderful samba dancer. Oh, yes, I love to samba. Well, uh, Mrs. Cooper would be asking too much for you to teach Wally how to samba in time for the dance. Well, I... Uh... Oh, she'd love to. She'll do it. Now, now, wait. <laughs> let's keep the family. Now, let's let... <laughs> let's let Mrs. Cooper decide. After all, she's the one who has to do the teaching. Well, Liz... Well, Liz. Gladly, she said, with the cold muzzle of a revolver at each temple. Excellent. I'll send him over the very first thing in the morning. Good. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, what are you doing dancing around the living room? Oh, haven't you heard, Katie? I'm opening up a dance studio. Huh? Yes, all you need is six lessons with Liz Lazonga. My slogan is, learn to samba with a red-hot number. <laughs> now, what are you talking about? I'm giving a samba lesson this morning to the son of the new board member at the bank. Oh, really? What's the boy like? Well, all I know is he's painfully shy. Never takes his eyes off the ground. No. Yeah, the first time I saw him, I thought he was looking for cigarette butts. <laughs> oh, that must be Wally. I'll get it. Well, good luck, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, Hello. How are you, Wally? You remember me. I'm Liz Cooper. Uh, won't you come in? <laughs> well, let's go in the living room, shall we? <laughs> won't you sit down? Picked up any good cigarette butts lately? <laughs> Something. I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> now, Wally, your father said you wanted to learn to samba. Uh, samba. We might as well begin. Uh, suppose you watch me now. Now, this is a basic step. Now, watch my hips, see? Do you think you can do that? Well, why don't you say something? <laughs> I'm watching your hips. <laughs> Look, the step is very simple. And this time, look at my feet. Da 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 Wally, you're still watching my hips. I like them. They're different. <laughs> different from what? My hips. <laughs> look, Wally, you saw how it goes. Why don't you see if you can do it? Well, I'll try. Good. Now you try it alone first. Da 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 da. Fine, fine. Only take smaller steps. Don't don't leap around so much. You'll be dancing with a girl, not an antelope. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Well, it's really an easy step to do. Uh, I think maybe you've got it now. Suppose we try it together. I said, suppose we dance together. You mean <laughs> just the two of us? <laughs> Yes, that's the usual number. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, I can't dance with you. You're a woman. <laughs> I know, my husband...
husband likes me this way. <laughs> I don't know. Look, Wally, some people are men and some are women. They're made that way so they can dance together. Oh. Uh, really, it's very simple, Wally. Now, let's try it. Okay. Hey, this is all right. Oh, I think I'm catching on. Oh, Miss Cooper. Oh, I'm sorry I stepped on your foot. You don't think it's broken, do you? Uh, oh, no. My shoe always bends under like this. Well, if it isn't broken, we might as well go on dancing, huh? I'm beginning to like it. Me too, Wally. I haven't had so much fun since I stepped on a rusty nail. On with the dance. <laughs> Bedroom, George. How'd the lesson go, dear? Just peachy. Hey, what are you doing? Soaking these red blobs that used to be my feet. <laughs> my legs look like a couple of thermometers. Mm. <laughs> then Wally isn't exactly Arthur Murray. George, Wally dances the samba like a kangaroo with hot coals in its pouch. <laughs> Sorry the kid gave you such a rough time, honey, but it was worth it. Mr. Forsythe came to my office this afternoon, gave me a cigar, and sat and talked for half an hour. He never done that before. Well, I'm glad my arches didn't fall in vain. <laughs> oh, he said Wally had a wonderful time and was absolutely thrilled, uh, you know, at learning to samba. Well, it's nice to know the dancing bear enjoyed himself. Oh, he did. In fact, the dancing bear is coming over for another lesson tomorrow. Oh, no. George, I can't do it. My feet are only human, you know. But, Liz, it may mean a promotion. I'll say you'll do it. For me, huh? Well, all right, George. But believe me, these little piggies will never go to market again. <laughs> We find Liz in the unaccustomed role of dancing teacher. Right now, she's giving Wally Forsythe his second samba lesson. They're dancing not cheek to cheek, but shin to shin. Oh, well, Wally, that was fine. You've improved a lot. Gee, do you really think so, Mrs. Cooper? I certainly do. We've been dancing for five minutes. You've only stepped on my feet six times. <laughs> it was real true to you to wear Mr. Cooper's old football shoes. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get to my toes for three inches. <laughs> well, shall we try it once more? Uh, Mrs. Cooper, before we try dancing again, I'd like to <clears throat> ask your advice about something. Well, all right, Wally. Maybe we'd better sit down. And shall we sit here on the couch? Well, oh, it's all right, Wally. I'll sit at one end and you can sit at the other. Well, we could put a pillow between us to make it proper. Well... I'll tell you what, I'll go upstairs and you call me on the downstairs phone. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's all right, Mrs. Cooper. So we'll sit on the couch. All right, now, Wally. What do you want advice about? Oh, I know it sounds awful silly, but... I'm in love. You are, Wally? Yeah. With a girl. <laughs> well, you couldn't have made a better choice. She doesn't know it yet, Mrs. Cooper, and I wanted to ask you, should I tell her or keep it to myself? Of course you should tell her, Wally. But, gee, you don't know how bashful I am, Mrs. Cooper. Even in school, when I want to leave the room, I don't hold up my hand. I climb out the window. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, uh... Well, it shouldn't be too difficult. Just take her by the hand and say, I love you. Okay. Um, uh, Mrs. Cooper? Yes? Uh, give me your hand. What? Mrs. Cooper, I love you. Wally, there must be some mistake. No mistake. I love you, Mrs. Cooper. Or, as I call you in my diary, dreamboat. <laughs> that in your diary? Yes, Mrs. Cooper. So when I got home last night, I crossed out nothing much happened today, and I wrote in, wow! <laughs> Wally, you mustn't 
say things like that. After all, oh, I know you're older than I am and you're married, but, well, I just can't help the way I feel. Frankly, Mrs. Cooper, I think you're just real gone. <laughs> well, anyway, my feet are. <laughs> I hope you aren't mad at what I said, but honestly, you're the swellest person I've ever known. You're the only person who's ever been nice to me. Oh, now, Wally, surely somebody else is nice to you. What about your father? He acts like he doesn't even know me. What makes you say that? He always refers to me as, what's his name? (laughs) Wally, I'm very flattered that you think you're in love with me, but you must remember I'm married to George. Gee, I forgot all about Mr. Cooper. Oh, you wouldn't mind leaving him, would you? I wouldn't mind. I thought not. Oh, he's so old. Oh, he must be way over 30. Why, uh, yes. Yes, that's right, Wally. George is old and kind of broken down, and he needs me. Needs you? Yes, he he needs me to keep fresh batteries in his hearing aid. (laughs) And I'm the one he calls when his mush is too hot. He's too weak to blow it himself. Well, I should have known you'd be like this, loyal to the end. But if this is farewell, then could I... Could I kiss you goodbye? Well, I... Just one little kiss on the hand? All right, Wally. What are we waiting for? Where can I park my gum? <laughs> Don't bother parking it. We aren't going to be stopped that long. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, you see, my kiss makes you cry out with passion, doesn't it? No, your braces scratched me. <laughs> Can you believe it, Mr. Atterbury? <laughs> Tell us, Wally. What did Wally do there? Well, then he took me by the hand and said... Mrs. Cooper, I love you. Why, that little (laughs) devil. (laughs) That's pretty funny. Imagine Wally being in love with you, Liz. (laughs) Isn't that a scream? (laughs) (laughs) Ha, ha. (laughs) Oh, now, Liz, you'll have to admit it's pretty hilarious. Well, I'll admit I'm old enough to be his sister. (laughs) And I don't see why his being in love with me is so funny. You fell in love with me once, you know. Well, Liz, honey, I don't see why you're getting uh, sore. Now, 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 look, you two, it's all over, and Liz did a wonderful job. George, we're in solid with foresight, thanks to her. Oh, it wasn't so much. Oh, yes, it was. And to show my appreciation, I'm going to take you out on the town tonight, anywhere you want to go. Oh, could we, could we possibly go to the Starlight Roof? Why not? Oh, wonderful. I have come back. I have to see you again, Mrs. Cooper. Wally, what are you doing here? Mr. Cooper, your wife and I love each other. Madly. And I want you to give her up. After all, you're old. Your hair is streaked with gray. Your face is all lined and saggy. And your stomach is... I'm Mr. Atterbury! <laughs> That's Mr. Cooper. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Cooper... Your wife and I love each other. Don't we, Dreamboat? Wally. What, Dreamboat? Go away. No, no. Stay here. Speak up. Blow your whistle, Dreamboat. George, <laughs> Mr. Atterbury, please. I've decided to take you away, Mrs. Cooper. I can't leave you here. A nursemaid to an empty shell of an old man. <laughs> what? Wally. Sometimes it's merciful to be cruel. And tell your husband what you said about him today. Liz, what did you say about me? Well, I, uh, uh... Go ahead, don't be afraid. Tell him, Dreamboat. Wally Forsyth, don't call me Dreamboat. Anything you say, darling. And don't call me darling. Okay, I won't, dear. And don't call me dear. Try mother. <laughs> Mr. Cooper, why don't you step out and let your wife find the happiness she deserves? After all, you're an older man. You're more like her father. The boy's right. Why don't you give her up, Dad? 
Liz, what did you tell this kid about me? Well, it's all very simple, George. I explained to Wally about your age and how you need me. Uh, understand, George? I, I explain how you're getting on in years, and now more than ever you need me. It isn't fair to hold her. You can get somebody else to blow your mush. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Uh, uh, oh, she's right, Wally. I need her now more than ever. If, if Liz left, there'd be nobody here to knit my shawl. And, and when my rheumatism twists me in knots, who, who'd untie me? See, Wally, he needs me. I can't leave him. But Dreamboat, their mother. I mean, Mrs. Cooper. Well, what about me? Very well. I'll go away. I'm going where there aren't any women. You're going to join the Foreign Legion? No, I'm going to join the YMCA. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, as long as this is goodbye, may I kiss your hand? Of course, Wally. Oh! Oh. Darn those braces. Farewell. <laughs> oh, wasn't he sweet? George, why don't you ever kiss my hand? Well, I would, kiddo, but I'm too old to bend over. <laughs> Mind. Well, now that Liz's grimy amours are out of the way, shall we go to the Starlight Room? Oh, yes, Les. i better get dressed. Oh, George, we're finally going to the Starlight Room. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello. How are you, sir? Tonight? Well, uh, I, uh... Oh, yes. Uh, yes, it'll be all right. I'll tell her. Uh, goodbye. Who is that, George? Mr. Forsythe, he's on his way over here. What on earth for? Well, you did such a good job with Wally. Now, oh. he wants to learn the samba. Oh, no! <laughs> you have been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rawlick. Tonight's program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. My Favorite Husband has been presented through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.